So what I would like to do now is illustrate that the superconductor is more efficient at deviating fields that are parallel to the axis than transverse or sideways fields. So I'm going to change these boundary conditions on the solution region in order to switch the direction of the magnetic field. And later on, we'll rotate the superconducting disk. So now the bottom edges, instead of having zero tangential field, I'm going to assign constant vector potential on the bottom and the top edges so that we have a field that's sideways. So on the left and right boundaries, I have a zero tangential magnetic field. And on the bottom and top, I have opposite values of vector potential. I'll go ahead and solve this. And you can see that the magnetic field is virtually unattenuated by the superconducting disk. In fact, it, for a, a very thin disk, it's, there's absolutely no deviation of the magnetic field whatsoever. Another thing we can look at is the torque that's acting on the superconducting disk. And there will be no torque if the disk is parallel to the magnetic field, like in this configuration here. So what I would like to do is, is use the label mover feature to rotate the superconducting disk. So I go to parametric analysis with label mover. So we're doing serial analysis. And I choose my base problem. Make sure that I have the model that we're working on here, which is disk in XY symmetry. Now I will add values. And we want to look at the torque, the mechanical torque that's acting on the superconductor. So we'll add this value. OK, let's close. And now we will record steps. So I'm going to rotate the superconductor about the central part 15 degrees. And I'm rotating the superconductor. We'll add a step. And I'm going to repeat the last step a couple times. And I'll repeat three times. I will close this. And let's get the results. So now it's solving the problem. It starts off with a very small value of mechanical torque when the field is parallel to the disk. Now the mechanical torque is going to be increasing. And it'll once again decreasing as we swing into the vertical configuration. We're just looking at three steps here. OK. And we can also plot, if we can look at the field line here, you can see that, uh, that the field is, is deviated once again as we're rotating our superconductor. And I can plot the torque. Uh, you can see we started off with zero mechanical torque. And the torque is continuing to increase, and it'll decrease once again as we go back into the vertical configuration. The next problem that I want to look at is a, a ring in XY symmetry. 